<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Art of Awesomeness podcast. It is the 14th episode, I believe. Correct, yes, Adrian? it is. It is the 14th episode of the Art of Awesomeness podcast. Welcome. Thank you guys for tuning in. We are going to be continuing our... Before we um, continue our second part, if you watched mm. our first one where you went over my personality... Check that video out. Uh, on this, yeah, on the 16 Personalities website. Mm-hmm. We are going to talk about Adrian's now. Oh boy! Dive into that mind of his. Yikes! It's a dangerous place. But, but before we get into that, we do have the first order. Of <laughs> we do the first order of business. Uh, happy National Oysters Rock Rockefeller Day. Rockefeller. Rockefeller. Is that how you say it? Rockefeller. Okay. Yeah. Rockefeller. National Peculiar People Day. That's us. Uh, National Sunday Supper Day. And that's it. So, seeing as today is obviously Sunday, oh, you should like probably ice cream Sunday. you should probably eat supper on Sunday. But we're in the Nothing U.S., so it's done. dinner. Oh, is it supper British? I've heard I've heard supper in the United States, but I, at least where we live, you have you have I, you ever like been to someone's house and they're like ready for supper? I've never nah, really but heard now that. that I, now that that's a thing, I'm going to start using that now. Yeah, yeah. Go back to like eighth grade, Christian. Oh, yeah. Oh, my British phase in eighth grade. Yeah. My British phase in eighth grade. You know, it's interesting. I was looking at the analytics, and we don't have anyone else from any other country but Indonesia still. Yeah. Like, that's, such a, that's just an oddball, like, fact. Thank you. Yeah, if you're the person who's from Indonesia watching, watching. thank you. But um, that's crazy. That's, yeah. It's not, I that's crazy. That's Never would have thought that. I didn't, don't know anyone from Indonesia. <laughs> uh, but, so, yeah, just in yeah. case, uh, you need to get quickly caught up on... Uh, last episode since this is technically a continuation yeah um christian is a mediator personality type i believe it's an infpt and mine is an infjt i'm an advocate so Mm. i'm just going to quickly run over because i did it in the first episode but since we're going over my personality type i'm just going to run over it quickly again Mm. i am 72 percent, and this is all coming from the uh, 16 personalities quiz I am 72% introverted and 28% extroverted, 30% observant and 70% uh, intuitive. I am 53% feeling and 47% thinking, so pretty split there. Mm -hmm. 45% judging and 46% prospecting. 35% assertive and 65% turbulent. My role is a diplomat and my strategy is constant improvement. So same, very similar to Christian's. Uh, so we have the website uh, 16 personalities pulled up right here for the advocate yeah so we're just gonna be reading if you watch the last one you kind of know how this is gonna go yeah but if you don't we're just it has just a bunch of descriptions for each category introduction strengths weaknesses romantic relationships friendships and we'll just be reading those all right so so i'll start out with uh i'll start off with the introduction and then we'll just sort of uh change from there all right here we go yeah All right, so I'm an advocate, INFJT. Introduction. Advocates are the rarest personality types of all. So, forever alone. (laughs) Still, advocates leave their mark on the world. They have a deep sense of idealism and integrity, but but they aren't idle dreamers. They take concrete steps to realize their goals and make a lasting impact. Advocates' unique combination of personality traits makes them complex and quite versatile. For example, advocates can speak with great passion and conviction, especially when standing up for their ideals. At other times, however, they may choose to be soft-spoken and understated, preferring to keep the peace rather than challenge others. So, Definitely. what sort of... Oh, is well, that more accurate? You, uh, could you just call it? Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Say, speak with great passion. Yeah, I'd say that definitely with Adrian when there's something that he is that he's passionate about like he's he's the kind of guy that you know he he's easy to get along with and doesn't pose a threat initially um <laughs> but you know he's he's, yeah. he's, a, he's a good guy he's a good guy and then when you when you know that there's something very passionate that there's something that really resonates with him uh don't be you know, don't expect like this don't let the persona to fool you because he can we've gotten into some pretty interesting conversations yeah huh? and sometimes with other people like some of our instructors too in high school oh yeah where there's something that you're really really deeply passionate about you're not afraid if it's truly like you feel like it's the right moment to yeah. and it's appropriate you're not afraid to let that out which is something i really admire about 
about you, which is a thank cool you, trait. Mr. Shapsis. There is truth. Uh, uh, <laughs> Instagram? Uh, Instagram. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> We're not going to. <laughs> okay. Uh, standing up for what's right. Advocates generally strive to do what's right and they want to help create a world where others do the right thing as well. People with this personality type may feel called to use their strengths, including creativity, imagination, and sensitivity, to uplift others and spread compassion. Concepts like egalitarianism and karma can mean a great deal to advocates. Ooh, so, which, which is interesting because in our. Uh, Art of Giving episode. Yeah. yeah that that topic was kind of, around. yeah, that was, the topic was kind of brought up. We don't believe in karma in the religious way, but definitely in the sort of idealistic way. Yeah. It goes think. around, comes around. If you yeah. haven't watched that, check it out. It came out already. Yeah, check it out. Okay, let's see here. Advocates, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm going to bring the mic a bit closer. Advocates may see helping others as their purpose in life. They are troubled by injustice and they typically care more about altruism than personal gain. As a result, advocates tend to step in when they see someone facing unfairness or hardship. Many people with this personality type also aspire to fix society's deeper problems in the hope that unfairness and hardship can become things of the past. Mm -hmm. A little subscript right A little there. subscript. Nothing lights up advocates like creating a solution that changes people's lives. I can agree with that. I think that's Definitely. at least how I feel. Right that seems that. pretty accurate. Okay. Connecting with others and themselves. Advocates may be reserved, but they communicate in a way that is warm and sensitive. This emotional honesty and insight can make a powerful impression on the people around them. Advocates sure. view deep, authentic relationships with others, and they tend to take great care with other people's feelings. That said, these personalities also need to prioritize reconnecting themselves uh, with themselves uh, advocates need to take some time alone now and then to decompress, recharge, and process their thoughts and feelings. I think that's definitely true. Yeah. Like, you're, you're very, so, I know you're very selective with people, like, you value deep, authentic relationships with others. Like, when you are, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing, like, for the most part, when you're selective with your friendships, the ones that, the ones that matter, I notice, they, they tend to, they tend to, for the most part, stick around. Yeah. Even especially in high school too, like people like like Drew. Like oh yeah those, yeah, yeah. those people like that you saw that saw around that had the same classes or you just passed by that mm -hmm. you know you could connect with. Todd Beck. Notice Todd. Yeah, you're. I know you guys connected with them with that. That will be that will be a future episode that. guaranteed. But I know it's, that's definitely true. And a decompress, recharge, and process your thoughts. Yeah. That was definitely true. Like when you go on yeah. runs in the morning. Or like journaling, because that can go in different forms. But yeah, yeah, it's cool how you take the time to, to do those things instead of bottling up and. Yeah, I definitely quit. like to, because um, I do have that tendency to sort of like just sort of uh, internalize everything. So yeah. if I have the opportunity to sort of like take a step back and not have Diplomats. any anything crazy, yeah. And I think we're pretty similar in that way where we need like a little minute after something, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The cost of success. Oh boy. At times, advocates may focus so intently on their ideals that they don't take care of themselves. Advocates may feel that they aren't allowed to rest until they've achieved their unique vision of success, but this mindset can lead to stress and burnout. If this happens, people with this personality type may find themselves feeling uncharacteristically ill-tempered. I can, I can, I can I'll vouch for that. Advocates uh, might find themselves feeling especially stressed in the face of conflict or an, uh, and criticism. These personalities tend to act with the best of intentions, and it can frustrate them when others don't appreciate this. At times, even constructive criticism may feel deeply personal or hurtful to advocates. No, oh, I think so, the last part, you, you handle constructive criticism well. I think you value that very well, too. I definitely value criticism, but I think I can see what it means when it feels personal maybe yeah like maybe sometimes you don't see it as just sort of trying to help the overall project maybe you can see that as like a direction towards you mm -hmm. instead of the project yeah. i can see what they mean by that but yeah yeah that seems so far it seems pretty legit yeah yeah i'd say it's yours was pretty accurate so i'm, I'm yeah so far well, we still have a lot more to go so oh yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. this I'm is just the in, this is just the introduction um let's see here okay so this is the last part of this um a personal mission many advocates feel compelled to find a mission for their lives when they encounter uh, inequity or unfairness they tend to think how can i fix this mm. they are well suited to support a movement to right and to right a wrong 
no matter how big or small. Advocates just need to remember that while they're busy taking care of the world, they need to take care of themselves too. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that minds. Oh, advocates, you may Mother know. Mother Teresa. Oh. That doesn't look like Mother Teresa. No, it doesn't. It looks like a <laughs> witch. Okay, <laughs> let's see here. All right, Martin Luther King, Dang. Nelson Mandela, Dang. Mother Teresa, Dang. Marie Kondo. Uh, Lady Gaga? Oh, yeah. My man. Oh, hell no. Who's Nicole Kidman? I think she was like on the X Factor or something. No. Okay. Morgan Freeman. You got all the good ones. Gothy. Gothy? Yeah. Is that how you say it? I don't know. I'm just making it up. That was goth. All right, guys. Jon Snow. You know how many times that guy. Uh. Okay. Next. James Wilson. I don't know what that is. Me I don't neither. know what that is. Me neither. Uh, Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Okay. Dang, all the cool ones. I got Frodo. Galadriel? Galadriel? Lord of the Rings? Tom Kirkman. Two? Mm. Yeah. Rose Bukater? Titan? Oh, my gosh. Rose. Da-na-na. She's the one that survived. Yeah, that's... Oh my gosh. All the Des- guys... That movie is a horror film for men. Because all the guys died. <laughs> Yeah, think, for the most part. For the most part. For the most part, though. Uh, let's see. Desmond Hume. He gets lost. all the good ones. I don't know half of these. Aramis, I know. And you got Three Musketeers. It's like one of your favorite movies. That's true. <laughs> Love that movie. Uh, Michael, who's Michael Schofield? I don't know. Prison Break? Atticus, Atticus. Finch. Oh, K- To Kill a Mockingbird. Oh, um, man. Matt, Matthew, who's Matthew You got Murdoch? Daredevil? Who's Matthew Murdock? You don't know Matthew Murdock. That's Daredevil. That's the Daredevil himself? The superhero Daredevil, Muhammad. Dang, I'm sorry, this must got offend all you. The, you got, you got, you know, presidential people. You got diplomats. You got superheroes. You got you know, a musketeer. I'm down you with the musketeer. Frodo. I got a midget. <laughs> you got all these cool. People. You got a hobbit. Oh man. Hey, you know what? To be fair, I'm not like I'm. I'm not these people. Lies. And look. It, now it's, let's it's, talk about. Now let's get into your strengths. What's best and worst about me. And weaknesses. All right. We're going to start with his weaknesses. We're going to start I'm with his weaknesses? Just kidding. No, no, okay. no. Just kidding. Just kidding. I start with the strengths. Okay. Okay. Feel free. Oh, okay. Yeah. So first, creative. Okay. So you want to do like last time? I'll say and you you say if it resonates with you. Because that's sure. what we did last time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Creative. Advocate. Oh, adv- yeah. Advocate personality is enjoying finding the perfect solution for the people uh they care about yeah yeah to do this they draw on their vivid imagination and their strong sense of compassion this can take this can make them excellent counselors and advisors i would say, say that so. I, I especially throughout high school a lot of people would come to me for yeah, advice I, I, remember def- that. I have for sure yeah so I, for that. I would say the whole counseling and advising part definitely creative instantly true that's the first one yeah insightful advocates tip, is am i saying that right advocates? insightful, insightful. Ad, oh advocate oh yeah insightful. advocate yeah advocates typically strive to move past appearances and get to the heart of things mm. this can give them an almost uncanny ability to understand people's true motivations feelings and needs i'd say this one ties into the first one i think it does too yeah kind of understanding people in a way mm. i can see that yeah because most of the time i can find it pretty easy to get where someone's coming from in a situation mm-hmm. i think that kind of ties in yeah yeah uh principled oh principled principled. right people with the advocate personality type tend to have deeply held beliefs and Mm. their conviction often shines through when they speak or write about subjects that matter to them advocates can be compelling and inspiring communicators with their idealism persuading even the hardest of skeptics mr shapsis not mr shapsis is cool I'm i'm joking we're on the same page really but uh yeah yeah, I would say for the most part, I'm pretty principled when it comes to like standing Definitely. for what I believe in. I think that's, yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty up there. That's Passionate. accurate. Advocates can pursue their ideals with a single mindedness that may catch others off guard. These personalities rarely settle for good enough, mm-hmm. and their willingness to disrupt the status quo may not please everybody. That said, advocates' passion for their chosen cause is a key aspect of their personality. Ah. Uh. So, I don't know. I feel like that's something that would be a bit egotistical for me to like say is right or wrong. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think it's personally advocates to pursue ideals that single-minded catch. Yeah. Um, 
like they, uh, they rarely settle for good enough mm. i think is coming from like outsiders you always push yourself to even with anything like when we were working on concepts for certain projects and oh, i yeah. thought they were really good but you always had that voice in the back of your head just saying i can take it a bit further yeah. So and I can see how that could be a bit hindering as well too, huh? Yeah. Like if like you're a, if you're yeah. so critical that you're not even letting yourself like not giving yourself the yeah. chance to keep So it can go either way. Yeah, I yeah. Um, and then altruistic, last one for strengths. Yeah. Advocates generally aim to use their strengths <laughs> for the greater good. They rarely enjoy succeeding at other people's expense. Oh, that was the same as yours. Yeah, I was gonna say the same yeah, as yeah, yeah. the other one. They tend to think about how their actions affect others, and their goal is to behave in a way that will help the people around them and make the world a better place. What do you yeah. think? I mean, as far as what I think, I would say that I would, uh, I guess I would like to think that to be true. You know, obviously I don't, modest, but I don't know if that would be completely accurate but maybe someday hopefully i could get to that ding, level ding. i'd say for the part for how it was made uh i mm. think it got i think i think it got it mostly right i mean yeah but that yeah. that is interesting though because it in many ways it's very uh like mine but it's also very similar to yours as well yeah with subtle differences subtle but... differences so we're gonna take a quick intermission uh, real quick and then we're gonna go over the weaknesses, weaknesses. We're going to find out all about why I'm such a terrible human being. My Achilles heel. Perseus's neck. I don't know. Okay, we hope that you enjoy that intermission. Whatever intermission that was. Whatever it was. Uh, it was. We are now going, Christian's going to read my weaknesses. So. <sighs> Let's see. Sensitive to children. <laughs> Sensitive to criticism. Oh, I'm dyslexic. I'm sorry. Wait, did you actually think it said children? No. Oh. I was just going along with it. <laughs> it just said, oh, you mean like dyslexic is your weakness? Yeah. <laughs> it just says dyslexic. <laughs> Sensitive to criticism. When someone challenges their principles or values, advocates may react strongly. People with this personality type can become defensive in the face of criticism and conflict, particularly when it comes to issues that are near to their hearts. Yeah, Adrian, I definitely thoughts? I agree with the last part thoughts? for sure when it comes to um, things that are like more meaningful. I think I tend to let small conflicts or arguments slide a bit easier, you know, but when it's something big. You know, I kind of feel that need to sort of I yeah. don't know, maybe defend something just in case I feel like it's not right. Mm-hmm. But I, that definitely could be a weakness if you're way too sensitive to it, you know, but yeah. I definitely could I see myself being prone to. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I would say that's uh, especially the last part is accurate and for okay. small issues. I wouldn't say so. All right. Uh, reluctant <laughs> to open up mm-hmm. advocates. value. This is OK. These are pretty similar. Yeah. Um, they are similar, aren't yeah. they? Are, wait, so is, there's six strengths and six weaknesses? I think so. Okay. Yeah. Uh, reluctant to open up. Advocates value honesty, but they're also mm-hmm. private. They may find it difficult to open up and be vulnerable about their struggles. This may also be because they think they need to solve their problems on their own or don't want to burden other people with their issues. When advocates don't ask for help, they may inadvertently hold themselves back or create distance in their, their relationships. Yeah, that one actually... Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. Just, I'd say yeah. So. Just yeah. Just yeah. Yeah, I, it says, what does it say? Like it's needing to solve the whole problems on their own and mm-hmm. not wanting to like burden other people. I can see that. Yeah. For sure. But overall, I think that's pretty accurate. That's yeah. Right. Sweet. So have, the honesty is very... Honesty very is pretty big. Like that's... If there's one thing I don't like, it's being lied to. That's like the one... It's like, no, like none of these. Yeah. Like if we, if we ever did if we ever did an episode on like pet peeves, which I think we should probably do, oh, you know? Yeah. That would probably be like high up on there is like uh, disingenuous people are being kind of like used or lied to. Disingenuous people. My pet peeve is real people. <laughs> I love the fake news. <laughs> Perfectionistic. The advocate personality type is all but defined by idealism. Wow. While this is a wonderful quality in many ways, an ideal situation is not always possible. Mm-hmm. Advocates might find it difficult to appreciate their jobs living situations or relationships if they're continually fixating on imperfections and wondering 
whether they should be looking for something better. Yes. Yeah. I think this has to do with the whole uh, self-improvement thing, like constantly trying to improve your situation. I think that can lead mm. to, uh, especially myself, since this is my personality, yeah. being uh, sort of like, uh, you know, you could be doing better right now. Like just looking at your situation, even if it's good, you know, like it said, fixating on what's wrong with it mm -hmm. and trying to constantly fix it. So almost like what it said earlier, like not being good enough. Yeah. You're always trying to like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I so think I that's kind of good. Yeah. I think that aspect is, is legit. Yeah. Avoiding <clears throat> the ordinary. French? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That got real weird. Advocate personalities tend to be motivated by a sense of having a greater purpose in life. Hmm. They might consider it tedious or unnecessary to break their big visions into small, manageable steps, but they may be setting themselves up for frustration if they don't turn their dreams into everyday routines and to-do lists. Without these specifics, their goals may never be material. May never materialize. This is it, pretty interesting. This is actually the one I might disagree with the most, because I think you know how much I plan. Yeah, and I break things down. I think I do break things down into small, manageable yeah. steps. I I don't know if that's yeah, I don't know if that's 100% accurate. I could definitely see that someone with this personality like myself could find that difficult because it's yeah. not always easy for me to make those plans and lists, mm -hmm. but I do do them. So th this th this has truth in the sense that it might be difficult to do, but I, I would say yeah. that I, I do plan. Also, like it's, I think the theme is of how big. Right. Are you, yeah, it's just in general, like if you draw like any slight any slight truth in this to relate to you it's that you just have really big big ideas yeah but i do agree in the sense that you do chunk it up yeah i don't know i think that um i think that the chunking up is definitely hard to do so i agree that this can bring up some frustration like it says mm -hmm. uh but i wouldn't say that it's impossible for the personality type because yeah. I, I do i do usually try and break things down into at least making a list of like a, a plan you know, in order of mm -hmm. things to do. So. Yes, let's get them done. Yeah. Last one oh, is yeah. prone to burnout. <gasps> Advocates, perfectionism, and reserve may leave them with few options for letting off steam. Yeah. People with this personality type can exhaust themselves if they don't find a way to balance their drive to help others with necessary self care and rest. Fury. So, Rage. Adrian's going to rest for the rest of Anger. this episode. I'm just gonna I'm gonna mentally tune out. He's gonna take a nap. He's gonna go to sleep. I need a pacifier, man. This is getting this is getting too real. This is getting too real. And so you're using your pocket knife. <laughs> oh yeah. I just kinda instinctually reach for that. I'm sorry. As we can see, it's kicking up. Yep. Now time to spice things up a little bit with romantic relationships. Mm. Ladies. Ooh. Ladies, right? Uh yeah, never men. Okay, ladies out there. We don't, just we don't do that on this ladies channel. Ladies out there. Oh, gosh. I mean, this isn't like a calling card. Just, I don't know why I said ladies. You said that in my last one. I did. So I'm doing it for you. But Thank you. I, you know, I appreciate that. In general, that. if you guys are interested in what Adrian's love life is revolving around, what ideas, here's what it is. Adrian, you want to you say it? You want to start? No, sure, sure. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. <clears throat> you know? Okay. Yeah, you didn't read the quote? Oh, yeah. I'll read the quote. I need a drink for this first. Ding, 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 ding. Iced tea, raspberry, get it. Okay. Love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. I don't get it. Me neither. Yeah, uh, he had another quote that didn't make sense on my thing. Why is he giving quotes that don't make sense? You know, I think they're just trying to mess with us. Mm. <laughs> Gosh, class. Okay, so let's find something out. Advocates tend to take the process of finding a romantic partner seriously. Mm. This is true. People with this personality type look for depth and meaning in their relationships, preferring not to settle for a match that's founded on anything less than true love. Um, it can take time for advocates to find a compatible partner. Some people might think advocates are too choosy, and it's true that these personalities can have unrealistic expectations. Some advocates uh, might hold out for a quote-unquote perfect partner or a relationship that ultimately does not exist. That's uplifting. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, that said, advocates' idealism, if balanced with just enough realism, can actually enhance their love lives. Advocate personalities tend to be in touch with their core values. This is true. So that uh, so they care about compatibility, uh, compatibility as well as surface level attraction. This can help them avoid matches that aren't founded on authenticity or shared principles. Mm -hmm. 
Once advocates do find a suitable relationship, they rarely take it for granted. Instead, they tend to look for ways to grow as individuals and strengthen their connection with their partner. This can help advocates' relationships reach a level of depth and sincerity of which many people can Ooh. only dream. Can only dream. That's that's saying Solamente a lot. sueño. Mm. I need a translation for that. It can only dream. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, good stuff. Thank Singer Soto would be proud. Okay. Is this for real? <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> That's what the next section is. <laughs> Advocates is care real? about integrity, and they tend to bristle when people try to change them or talk them into something that they don't believe. As a result, advocate personalities gravitate towards partners who appreciate them as they are, and there's a great deal to appreciate about advocates. They're warm, caring, honest, and insightful, and um, with an ability to see the truth that lies beneath surface appearances. Um, people, true. what was that? No, I was just saying that's true. Oh, okay. True. Yeah, I would not know that. Okay, let's see. People with this personality type create a depth to their relationships that can hardly be described in conventional terms. Because of their sensitivity and insight, advocates can tend to make their partners feel heard and understood in beautiful ways. Advocates aren't afraid to express their love, and they feel it unconditionally. The unconditional part is pretty true. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I'll show affection to people even if they don't really show it back most of the time. Like, I feel like that's What are you talking of... about? Like, just... Oh, it's romantic relationship. Yeah, yeah, Okay, yeah. yeah I, was, I, was, I was thinking about, like, your mom or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> okay. Subscript. Subscript. One of the things advocates find most important in establishing genuine deep connections with the people they care about. Is what? I don't know. Oh, oh, is that just oh, all? Wait, yeah, wait, okay. Wait. One of the things advocates <laughs> find most important is establishing genuine deep. Oh, okay, okay. I get yeah, it. yeah. I was just reading it weird. Yeah, me too. All right, let's see. Uh, this where we both read it the wrong way. <laughs> it's it. Okay. Man. Advocates tend to recognize that love isn't a passive emotion, but rather it's an opportunity to grow and learn, and they expect their partners to share this mindset. As a result, uh, relationships with advocates are not for the uncommitted or the shallow. Ding, ding. When it comes to intimacy, advocates can be incredibly passionate in ways that go beyond the physical. Wah, <laughs> people wah, with this person <laughs> people with this personality <laughs> type crave an emotional and even spiritual connection with their partner. They cherish not just the act of being in a relationship, but also what it means to become one with another person Ooh. in mind, body, and soul. That, that was deep. On the yeah. second one. <laughs> I, wait, what? <laughs> Become one with another person in my body. <laughs> oh. yes. Well, I, you know, actually, uh, that that's pretty, that's pretty spot on, to be honest. I, I don't really have anything to disagree with that, any of it. So, I mean, yeah, that does seem. There's that. I mean, yeah. I think when you you have that, right now you have that kind of that the kind of attitude where um, you're not in it just for the fun of it. I mean, I mean, yeah, for. I mean, you're not only for the reason of being in the fun of it, but you're also, when you're in that game, you're like, you're looking for someone because, hmm. like, that's it. You're not just like, oh, just on a whim. I'm not really into flings, if you know what I mean. Like, just sort of, like, random <sighs> spoofs. No. He's not, no. Not into that. Sorry, we get a bunch of comments every day saying, is he into flings? Is he into flings? <laughs> yeah, we definitely get the Sorry, comments. guys. I mean, uh, I mean, guys, like, guys, I mean. As in girls. <laughs> sorry, I mean, guys. Like, guys in general, like, sorry, people, he's not into flings. Believe me. <laughs> he's not into flings. I mean... Okay, we're going anyways, to the friendships. Do you want me to explain that a bit more? Yeah, uh, we, do we, we have time to go into friendships, right? Or do you want to make sure that we're, we're, we're still on schedule? Dude, yeah, I mean, do. yeah, I think so. We can probably knock it out. Yeah, all right. Friendship, friendship. Let's time right, to so see I'm if I'm going to have my best friend read this, because why not? Because let's see if we're supposed to be friends. And if it doesn't work out, then we will stop being friends. All right, <laughs> let's go. Oh. Sorry, <laughs> friend. I hurt everyone I touch. Okay. The most I can do for my friend is simply be his friend. Henry David Thoreau. What are these quotes like? Do you That's like crazy. that quote? Uh, no. <laughs> okay. Advocates have a deep desire for authenticity and sincerity in everything they do, from their daily activities to their relationships. Mm. As a result, people with this personality type rarely settle for friendships of convenience, but rather than rather than rely on superficial interactions with the people they see every day at work or school, they generally prefer to have a close circle of confidants. That's Confident. an interesting term. Yeah, but yeah, I think yeah, that's so true. It's kind of you rather have something real. 
like a like a close circle of intimate friends, not like a bunch of, of like fakies. Fakies. Interesting. Yeah. Good way of putting it. That was yeah, like fakies. solid. Fakie mm-hmm. McFakies. Yeah. Advocates tend to light up around friends who share their passions, mm-hmm. interests, and beliefs. Few things give these personalities more pleasure than connecting with others over discussions about meaningful ideas and philosophies. I say mm-hmm. that's true. Yeah. Once advocates know that they can trust someone completely, they find it incredibly fulfilling to share their innermost thoughts, ideas, and feelings with them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I say it's true. That's definitely. From first-hand experience, it was definitely true. Searching yeah. for a heart of gold. Just as advocates have high standards for themselves, they also have high standards for their friendships. They mm. want to feel compatible with their friends on a deep level. In addition, advocate personalities generally want to surround themselves with people who will inspire them to grow and improve. Most advocates don't just want to have fun with their friends. They also want to learn new things, make new discoveries, and deepen their bonds. I'd say that's legit. I'd say that definitely. Yeah. That, that's a home run for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a tall order. Oh, boy. Literally. <laughs> Get it? Because we're tall. <laughs> ah. uh... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. anyway. <laughs> this is a tall order. We, we had like a buffer there for a <laughs> yeah, second. Yeah, we were thinking. Yeah. Um, and advocates may feel that it's difficult to meet the sort of friends they're searching for because advocates are a rare personality type. They may feel they may meet relatively few people who really remind them of themselves. The rarest personality type. Yeah. Yeah. The ra- Hey, that's the good thing though. Like your limited edition. Limited. LTD. <laughs> as a result, they may feel as if they need to settle for less than fulfilling friendships or else accept being alone Ooh. forever. <laughs> No. Fortunately, though, advocates are more than compatible with finding the types of friends they long to meet. I love how they'll like they'll say something really bad, and then they'll give you like yeah. a little bit of hope, and then like but on the other end, back and forth on the other end, <laughs> like end. dark, but yeah, uh, uh, long to meet. They might just have to use their intuition to do so, in their quiet, understanded way. Advocate personality types have a knack for seeing beyond appearances, and understanding people's deeper natures. They can use this ability to move past first impressions and figure out whether someone's interests, values, and attitudes might be compatible with their own. By doing so, by doing this, advocates can befriend people who might seem totally different from them, but who are compatible on a deeper level. I'm sorry for doom. hitting that. <laughs> the doom. Doom. Uh, yeah, subscripts. subscripts. In a friendship, it's as though advocates are searching for a soulmate. Dang. Someone who shares every facet, facet? of their passions and imagine. So you're looking for a soulmate? I guess. Don't make it weird. Uh, Don't do it. I know it's something to make a joke. Don't do it. It's just... You gotta suppress it, man. I mean, I think I can be, if you want. I mean, since you're looking for... Uh... I mean, I'm not actively looking but that says so but... i mean ooh. okay all right let's Loyalty see and authenticity i feel like we just creep people out more than anything. they're like yeah i think we just cringed them out we just like, yeah we did we did we're sorry people. advocates have a quiet determination that can be quite charismatic and their ability to express themselves clearly and passionately can make them truly shine Ding. At times, these traits may lead to unwanted attention and popularity for advocates who tend to be private. Not true. That's true. Oh, that is okay. true. Yeah, people were all over you in high school. Uh, yeah, yeah, you might want to reevaluate always, they'd that. They'd always confide in you for like questions. Or yeah, they would ask anything. me stuff. I don't, I don't know if I was popular or anything like that, nah, but they would definitely. Were. They would. Everyone they would talk had a nickname to me. for you. Everyone had a nickname for you. We have. Yeah, we have so You think we can do that? Let's see, uh, uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, okay. This. Advocates may we sometimes find themselves surrounded by people who want to impress them. Mm. Paradoxically, this can make it more difficult for people with this personality type to find friends with whom they feel a connection. Oh, great! <laughs> After all, the only way to count to be counted among advocates' true friends is to be authentic, honest, and real. So just be be honest. Yeah. Once they do find genuine good friends, people with advocate personality type make loyal and caring companions. With their trademark warmth and enthusiasm, they support their friends' efforts to grow and expand their lives. In mm-hmm. general, advocate personalities don't require a real, 
deal, a great deal of day to day attention from their friends. Yeah, for them, true. quality trumps quantity, mm. and that includes the time that they spend with their near, with their nearest and dearest. That's very That's true. true. Yeah, as trust grows, advocates tend to share more of their inner lives with their friends. If mm. these revelations are met with acceptance and support mm. this can herald Ooh, that's a nice word herald, that is herald the yeah. sort of friendship and transcends time and distance lasting a lifetime over the years advocates may end up with just a few true friendships rather than a wide circle of casual acquaintances mm-hmm. but as long as those friendships are built on the richness of mutual understanding advocates wouldn't have it any other way i think the whole thing is pretty spot on to be honest that is yeah, expect, yeah, I think you I think that's true. You value real friendships. Yeah. And next is parenthood. So right. parenthood. They have a they have a quote here. So it says, My instinct is to protect my children from pain, but adversity is often the thing that gives us character and backbone. That's actually a good quote. I think that's the first one I was like, Oh yeah. That is pretty good. It's pretty saucy. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. As parents, advocates tend to look at their relationships with their children as opportunities to uh, learn and grow with someone they care about. These personality types also work to achieve another important goal, raising their children to be independent and all-around good people. Advocate parents uh, generally strive to be devoted and loving towards their children at all times as they imagine their children's futures. Uh, What advocates really look forward to is being able to interact and connect as equals with the people they help raise. That's, that's true definitely good. being independent and just yeah, good yeah, people yeah. in general like teaching sure. them good skills and stuff yeah. be unique just like me is, is that kind of contradictory like if two people are unique doesn't that make them like so the like same? be unique like telling you to be unique like, like if me? i was like be unique like me then we both be the same so it's like an so, oxymoron yeah or i could well, just be reading too much into it as their children grow Advocates may unconsciously project a great deal of their own beliefs onto them. People with this personality type often expect their children to demonstrate the same integrity and honesty that they expect from themselves. At the same time, advocate personalities may also push their children to think independently, make their own choices, and develop their own beliefs. Depending on the child's developmental stage and temperament, they might find these expectations confusing or stressful, even though their advocate parents have the best of intentions. Then we have a little subscript here says advocate parents want to raise children who are ethical, creative, and kind. Mm. I agree. Uh, if all this independence is taken to heart, it can cause some trouble for advocate parents as their children move into the more rebellious phase Ooh. of adolescence. Uh, this is especially true if the children choose beliefs that go against uh, their values as advocate parents. In this situation, advocates may feel as if their children are criticizing or rejecting them, a hurtful thing to do, t- uh, a hurtful thing to such a sensitive personality type. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. That's why you have your sister to practice. Yeah. So you just... You Myra, Myra. Okay, a job well done. Ultimately, advocate parents tend to realize that this isn't a sign of failure if their children turn out differently than they expected. Instead, they come to see this as a sign that they've successfully helped raise someone who has the ability to form their own ideals. Mm-hmm. Advocates' children often come to appreciate the combination of in- independence and integrity with which they were raised, especially as they get older. Advocates strive to make sure that their children grow up in a firm understanding of the difference between right and wrong. That's definitely true. Parents with this personality type encourage their children to fight for a cause they believe in and to be the best they can be. Uh, Whatever age their children might be, advocates can find a great deal of fulfillment and meaning simply in helping their children learn to be their true selves. I agree with that. that. Yeah. Yeah, Do you, but you... I think that when it says that they might believe differently than their parents i don't know how okay i would be like if they went like off the deep end you know yeah if you know what i mean yeah so um i definitely want them to have their own sense of independence and to be able to make decisions on their own to learn not what to think but how to think yeah you know so i definitely would value that in my children so if like one of them wanted to marry like a goat or something like if one of them wanted to marry a goat i mean I would probably send them abroad, but, um, <laughs> you know. But you should be proud because you raised them to... If I raise my children <laughs> to, like, marry a goat, 
um, want me. One, that's an Arab stereotype, but it's funny as heck. But two, I would probably feel like a failure at that point. I wouldn't feel like a success, too, to be real. That is funny, though. <laughs> two completely different emotions. I'd feel like a failure. But that is funny. It, it would be funny, but I, I would feel like, like yikes, you know? I don't think yikes. anyone wants that. Okay, career paths. Christian, if you want yeah. to... So, we are going to be talking about... Oh, we have another quote. Here we go. Jimmy Carter. That was Ugh. the president, right? Yeah, he was like a hippie president, I think. Okay. It's better to fail while striving for something wonderful, challenging, adventurous, and uncertain than to say, I don't want to try because I may not succeed completely. Hmm. Jimmy Carter. Oh, rest Jimmy. So God rest. Advocates tend to seek a career path that aligns with their values rather than one that offers status and material gain. Fortunately, people with this personality type are, are they're able to find work that suits them in just about any field. Yeah. In fact, oh. many advocates may have trouble deciding which job is best for them because they're able to imagine so many possibilities. Yeah. These personalities may see 10 wildly different paths forward, each with its own set of rewards. Yeah. This can be exciting, but also stress-inducing, because picking just one means letting go of so many others. So this you is just so really true. want the best of everything. This really is so true, because I've looked at so many different career paths all at once, and they all looked amazing to me. Yeah. But, like, so for one of them was, um, I believe it was the National Guard I was looking at, then I was mm -hmm. looking at forest park ranger then i was looking at a ups package handler then i was looking at all know, these different groups yeah and so um yeah I, I definitely agree with that you can look at a bunch of different things and think they're all great at the same yeah, time because they all have you can't choose yeah yeah so, yeah that's true truth beauty and purpose purpose Ooh, that's a nice picture yeah it is oh, oh actually she seems to be having a bad time <laughs> well Good thing you're not her. <laughs> Advocates one. Knee slapper. Oh, okay. That, okay. Sorry, I thought that was high five. Okay, we can hit a high five if you want. Mm, yeah. All right, thanks. Huh. Okay. No, oh, sorry, well, sorry, well, sorry, sorry, no. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, Advocates want to find meaning in their work and to know that they are helping and connecting with people. This desire mm. to help and connect can make roles as counselors, psychologists, teachers, social workers, yoga instructors, Heck no. and spiritual leaders. Very rewarding for advocates. I agree with yoga instructor. Careers in healthcare, especially in the more holistic varieties, can also be attractive options for this personality type. Yeah, I don't know about the yoga instructor. Uh, I think that's a great way. You haven't explored that yet, so how do you know? Many <laughs> advocates are also strong communicators. Mm. This explains why they're often drawn to careers in writing, authoring, many pop popular books, blogs, stories, and screenplays. Music, photography, design, and art can all be viable options as well, allowing advocates to focus on deeper themes of personal growth and purpose. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah. That's a fair thought. I that, think that said, is, I think that's legit. Yeah, advocates <clears throat> can excel in a range of fields. Wherever they work, people with this personality type can find ways to help others. They can also find ways to use their creativity in nearly any position. Hmm. No matter what it says on their business cards, advocates insight can enable them to spot unusual patterns and come up with out ooh come up with out of the box solutions creating real change in others lives out That's of the nice. box solutions Sub okay subscript uh i like how we just say subscript i know subscript. i don't For, even know if it is subscript <laughs> it's just like in a little box it's like, like a below. divider i don't know for advocates, money and employee of the month simply won't cut yeah these personalities want a career that fits their values and principles dang it Come on. Two roads diverged in a, in a yellow, yellow wood. wood. Hmm? What does that mean? I don't know. We'll never know. Yeah, we'll never know. We just won't read it. Next. Yeah. Advocates' needs may be heard hard to meet in some work environments, especially those that offer a little independence and agency. Advocate personalities are sometimes drawn to behind-the-scenes and non-competitive roles, but mm. these jobs can lead to frustration if they don't allow advocates to act as they see fit, grow as individuals, and make a difference. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. For this reason, P 
People with the advocate personality type may feel fulfilled by seeking out leadership positions or by starting their own business. Mm. By finding jobs that offer more autonomy. Ooh. Advocates can focus. Yeah. yeah. They were learning about that in my history class. Advocates yeah. can focus on applying their creativity and integrity to everything they do. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Advocates yeah. may also find it gratifying to create bridges between seemingly dis, dis how do you say that? Disparate. I've never seen that word before. Professional fields. For example, by writing about psychology or by being an environmental lawyer. So never kind of heard of bridging that. those. These hybrid careers uh, can offer plenty of opportunities for advocates to exercise their creativity and their love of learning. I think that's true because I absolutely agree with things that. that you want to do. I see a lot of room for to mend those too. Yeah, because I, I I like like paleontology and archaeology, but then I really also like filmmaking and art. It's always kind of had that idea yeah, of like merging those two. Merge. Yeah, yeah, I see that. No. I never see that. Where advocates struggle is in work that doesn't take personal needs into consideration, is overly repeti- repetitious, mm. repetitious, Ooh. or promotes conflict. Jobs with these characteristics can leave advocates frustrated and unfulfilled. People with this personality type may also chafe. Chafe. I was going to say chafe. Chafe. Chafe at the criticism and pressure that come with cutthroat competitive work environment so i couldn't work for gordon ramsay is what it's saying <laughs> what does he always say how did you burn ice cream <laughs> how, how do you burn how ice cream, burn ice cream? <laughs> how the f- did you burn how the f- did you burn ice cream yeah yeah a sense of mission in truth advocate personalities can do well in any field oh. to be truly happy however they need to find work that aligns with their values and allows them some independence right. advocates crave opportunities to learn and grow alongside the people they are helping when this happens advocates may finally feel as if they are fulfilling their life's mission and contributing to the well-being of humanity on a personal level dang well that just well. made my day <laughs> genius let's see here uh yeah i would agree with that okay i think most of that's pretty good i think all that's really good yeah okay i think yeah it has a good point when it mentions hybrid relationships yeah career hybrid relationships because there's you definitely have a lot of potential to yeah and definitely it definitely goes along with having like all those different career path ideas you know you have so many you can't choose i can see why you'd Mm -hmm. want like just merge them if you can take them all on Take on this okay let's see workplace habits. Place habits okay let's see here Action. advocates have some specific needs when it comes to satisfying uh work to comes to satisfying a work environment people with this personality type want to know that their work helps people and promotes their own personal growth this means that their work must be in line with their values principles and beliefs in the workplace, advocates tend to thrive when they have opportunities to express their creativity and insight, and they're especially motivated when they know that what they are doing has meaning. They mm-hmm. also tend to do best when they can ignore workplace politics and hierarchies and simply do what matters to them. Most people with this personality type prefer not to think of themselves as above or below anyone else, no matter where they are on the job ladder. Fortunately, advocates are resourceful and creative, and they can find ways to make nearly any position work for them. That's true. Like, you want to get right to the good, like, ex- yeah. cut the excess. It's almost kind of like with the personalities. Like, you don't really want the fluff of a person. You want to go, like, just, just like, who are you? Like, like no, yeah. you know, honesty and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, advocates of ordinance. Advocates uh, value cooperation, sensitivity, and independence. As employees, they tend to gravitate towards managers who are open-minded and willing to consider their input. Advocate personalities may become frustrated when they feel unheard, so having a manager who listens to them can make all the difference. Ideally, advocates will also find a manager whose values align with their own and who's and who offers them encouragement and praise. Because advocates tend to act on their convictions and and, and aim to do their best. I don't know. I misread that. Their morale can be vulnerable to criticism, particularly if it's unwarranted. Other morale killers for these personalities may include strict rules, formal structures, and routine tasks. I don't know if it's it's that morale killing if it's uh, like routine. Is it a morale killer for you? You know, I don't I don't know if it's like it would kill everything for it. I think I could still enjoy a job like that, but maybe not like long term. Yeah, like if I like had that to would change it. Yeah, like if I had to work a simple job, I think I I definitely could if I knew I was like providing it and doing it for the right reasons. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. 
but I, I think yeah, I definitely see what it means. Of course, a perfect work environment isn't always possible. Advocate employees with less than ideal managers may need to draw on their inner resilience and seek out other mentors. The good news is that people with this personality type are more than capable of handling workspace, cha uh, workspace challenges, including the challenge of having a difficult manager. Yeah. I just call that playing the game. Advocate colleagues. As colleagues, advocates can be quite popular and well-respected. Um, people with this personality type uh, are likely to be seen as positive, eloquent, and capable co-workers. Among their greatest strengths is their ability to identify others' motives and diffuse conflicts and tension before anyone else even senses a disturbance. Mm -hmm. yeah. At times, efficiency may be less of a priority for advocates than collaborating with and helping colleagues who need a boost. While this is usually a strength, there is a risk that others will take advantage of their desire to help. Advocates may find themselves picking up the slack for their less uh, dedicated co-workers at the expense of their own energy and well-being. They uh, Also, they tend to be warm and approachable colleagues. Uh, advocates are still introverts. From time to time, they may need to step back and work alone, pursuing their own goals in their own ways. I see that. There's yeah. like a balance between working with others and... And like you need some space sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, like back off. Get away from me. Yeah, 72% introvert. Let's not forget that. <laughs> yeah. 72. Um, advocate managers. As managers, advocates may dislike wielding their power. These personalities prefer to see those who work under them as equals rather than micromanage their subordinates. This is very similar to yours. Mm, yeah. Advocates often prefer to empower them to think and act independently. They work hard to encourage others not to crack the whip. That's not to say that advocates have low standards, far from it. Their sense of uh, equality means that they expect their subordinates to live up to the standards that they set for themselves. Advocate personalities want their employees to be uh, rigorous, motivated, reliable, and unfailingly honest, and they will notice if their employees miss the mark. Mm -hmm. um, compassionate and fair advocate managers often take pride in identifying their subordinates' unique strengths. They make an effort to understand their employees' motivations, an effort that is helped by advocates' intuitive insights. That said, people with this person... I love that. Like They'll, they'll say all this stuff and like, that said... That said... People with this personality thing. type can be quite stern if they catch someone behaving in a way that they consider <gasps> unethical. <gasps> Sin. <laughs> advocates have little tolerance for lapses in reliability or morality. When their employees' good intentions match their own, however, advocates will work tirelessly to ensure that their entire team feels valued and fulfill that so you believe in the good of people yeah you try to bring the best out in them like like you hold them up to a high standard and you help them to reach that standard yeah sort like of a thing. like a jedi master yeah or jedi knight i see that like obi-wan kenobi your yeah you're obi-wan and i'm anakin but that means that you turn on me and like try to you end up killing me yeah, but that's when we're older. We don't have to worry about that right now. Yeah, that's cool. Respect. I get <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> that's when we're older. Do what you got to do. You know? Yeah, you know what? I get Why that. I, I'm, I'm really old, so I probably can't think straight anyway. So. Yeah. All right. Well, like, this you're... is going to cut off in a second. When we come back, Fish. we'll uh, go over the conclusion, conclusion and an all that good stuff. Life. <gasps> all right. So this is where we read about the conclusion of my personality. We wrap it up. This is it. In the end, it's your actions, how you respond to circumstance that reveals your character. Kate Blanchett. Blanchett. Cool. All right. You, you're going to read it or do you want? Uh, I think, did I read? <laughs> I don't remember. I, I think I read your conclusion, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Back okay, and forth, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Few personality types are as passionate and enigmatic as advocates oh, or that's a big infages. Word. <laughs> as someone with this personality type, you stand out. You stand out for your imagination, your compassion, integrity, and deeply held principles. Yeah, definitely. Especially the principles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unlike many other idealistic types, however, you are also capable of turning your ideals into plans and executing them. Yet. Oh. Advocates face challenges too. They love doing that. Even the most idealistic and dedicated of personality types can become frustrated when it comes to navigating interpersonal conflicts, confronting unpleasant facts, pursuing self realization, or finding a fulfilling career. So, life. 
Yeah, just life in general. As a result, you may sometimes find yourself questioning who you really are and who you're really meant to be. Wow, that's that's deep, man. It's crazy. But what you have read so far is just an introduction and represents less than 5% of a less than 5%. The heck? Then what we can tell you about the advocate type, personality type. You may have muttered to yourself, wow. wow. This, this is, is so, so accurate. accurate. It's, it's creepy. creepy. Or they, they know, know more about me than the people uh, I am closest <laughs> to. You may even be a little... It's, wait, is this repeating it? You may not even look uncomfortable because you're not used to being so deeply understood. This is not a trick. This is not a trick. You felt understood because you were... You felt understood. I, th- I think this is just oh, because the, you. I think this is the part where they try selling us yeah. the premium. So. We spent years. This is how we wait. See if there's anything unique though. That I don't says, think there's anything. Okay. Oh wait. Are no, you ready? To, no. It's the same. It's the same. So basically, good job. You're an advocate. Good <laughs> job. You're an advocate. You get pay it. for premium. <laughs> no. How much is premium? I just want to see how much premium is. Let's see here. But advocate, you're not broken. Are they assuming that we were broken in Ex- the first place? Wow. <laughs> Take a deep breath, advocate. Your world is about to make a whole lot more sense. Uh, this is getting is a bit like the too Matrix crazy for me. I'm not trying to become like the next member of that movie. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but that was interesting. Oh, no. Hey. Whoa, hey. That was that. crazy. But yeah, that was actually, that was pretty enjoyable. That was read. very enjoyable. Yeah. And I would say that definitely, I would say at least in the high 90s, that was pretty accurate to who yeah. i am almost spot on for the principles for sure because yeah. they're all yeah. the time known adrian is <clears throat> his he al- he's always guided by his principles whenever he had a, has a thought it's always with his faith first and what his morals and be- core beliefs are and that's something yeah. that everyone can learn from your vision your glasses are like principal glass yeah they're Moral thick prescription glasses. too like oh. it's like <gasps> Look at the world. That's Look how at the inadequacy. It, and that's how we try to learn from it. Boom. But yeah, that was really cool. Uh, I would recommend to anyone, just like a, what we said in the previous episode, uh, I would really recommend people taking this quiz because uh, it is pretty insightful. Both Christian and I were pleasantly mm-hmm. surprised and happy with opening. our results. Mm-hmm. So because they very accurate um, mm-hmm. uh, on both of our parts. So uh, yeah. Definitely recommend this. We are not sponsored in any way by 16 Personalities. We should just say that right now. Um, <laughs> we really just, yeah, we just thought that this was a, a fun test to do it and very I think that it was uh, pretty accurate. So with that being said, just want to thank you guys for watching. We do have the verse of the day. That's right. Yeah. Now that you know a bit more about me, let's learn a bit more about the Bible. So Ooh, that, was, that was a nice That was unexpected. Question. Wow, that was a nice trip. That wasn't bad. That was that like was really good. I'm pleasantly surprised by that. You know that more about that makes that. me happy. That was really good. Remember that. That's a yeah. good transition. Let's see here. <laughs> we're gonna forget it. Like <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah. We need to write down that Gordon Ramsay thing too. For oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'll watch it back. We're okay. good. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, Ephesians six twelve through thirteen. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, they may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. It's pretty much stand by your principles. We don't fight against flesh and blood. Generally speaking, as Christians, that's a last resort thing. Generally speaking, you're fighting against ideologies, right? Conflicting ideologies, principles. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important as a Christian to stand by your principles because they will always and forever be under attack. I think that one's that definitely resonates with you. Yeah, that's definitely an Adrian Bible verse. Yeah, so definitely Mm -hmm. read up, you know, gain on your spiritual understanding and fight the good fight. So. Yeah, thank you guys for watching this Art of Awesomeness podcast episode. This was episode 14. Already. We're getting Already, man. Already second episode into the new year. Close getting to close. the end. Well, I guess it's in March, but whatever. Oh, it's in March? Yeah. Dang it. I mean, <laughs> look, thank you guys for watching. Yeah, thank watching. you guys for watching. Uh, reach out to us. If you guys are reach similar out to, us, to Adrian's it. personality type, yeah, if you guys are an advocate, we're the rarest. 
Yeah, you know, yeah. the real ones. The, the real special deal. ones that aren't, there's not a lot of them. And I'm not going to lie. If you like iced tea, the raspberry's not Raspberry bad. isn't bad. I'm just, it's starting to grow Start- on me. Ah, like a raspberry. <laughs> it's, raspberry. It's, it's, it's fruit, you know. Lemons are better. Mm? Lemons are better. Than raspberries? I think so. In my opinion. Mm. Whatever. Such an advocate. That's such an advocate thing. Such an advocate move, you know? Wait a minute. Advocate? I'm a diplomat. Wait. I'm a diplomat. But how? Wait. Oh, I'm a mediator. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, You're mediator. I'm advocate. We're both diplomats. And we're both, our strategy is both constant improvement. Okay, sweet. So, with that said, how do you want it? What do you want the last word to be? Last word to be is make sure that if you ever take one of these personality tests, remember that they do not define you indefinitely. Ooh, it is just it is just who you are right now. So if you're not happy with your personality, as true as it may be, there is always room for improvement. Yeah. So don't be discouraged if you look at yourself and you're like, ah, oh, you know. Like, for example, I'm very introverted. Let's say oh, I maybe want to be a bit more extroverted. Mm-hmm. That can change. These are not set in stone numbers right It's like a right guideline. Here. I kind of help you see. Because, like, for me, I this knows a lot more about me than I do. So yeah. it's kind of like a nice guideline to see where I'm at and where it kind of falls on this spectrum. So yeah. it's, it's very eye-opening for sure. Use yeah. that to your own advantage. So make sure you're not limiting yourself in any way. Make sure that you are making sure that you are uh, capable, first and foremost, mentally of making change in yourself, positive change and getting out the negative. So thank you guys for watching. As always, this episode of the Art of Awesomeness podcast is episode 14. Look out next Sunday for episode 15. Already 15. Already Dang. 15. Crazy. Oh, jinkies. Not bad, hey, man. Solid step. Solid. Oh. Oh, yeah, oh. solid step. Dude, we did it. We, we just knocked. This is our most productive. Session. This literally was our most productive. Oh my gosh. Four episodes. 12.46 a.m. Dang. Dang. Thank you.